Hey everyone, I'm Abhishek. In this video, I'm going to share exactly how I built my app from scratch in just 60 days with zero funding. Whether you're thinking about building your own app or just curious about the process, this video will give you actionable insights into what worked for me, what lessons I can share with you, and what you can do to start your own journey. This is what I did and you can follow these steps or learn what to avoid as you build your app. My goal is to make sure you leave this video feeling inspired and equipped to take the first step towards creating your own app. Let's dive right in. Before diving into development, I made sure to lay out clear requirements for the app. This is one of the most important steps in the whole process because without a clear direction, it is easy to get lost or overwhelmed. I didn't just assume what creators and fans needed, I took the time to gather insights. I did multiple surveys and interviews with creators to understand their pain point and what features would actually add value for them. After analyzing this data, I formalized the requirements clearly, ensuring that I knew exactly what to focus on. One key lesson I learned is the importance of building an MVP or a minimum viable product. It is easy to get caught up in the excitement and try to build a full suite of features, but that's not a smart way to approach it. What's really important is focusing on the core features that solve the problem, then validating the product market fit. That is exactly what I did. I started with the MVP, built the essential features, and now I'm focused on validating whether the app resonates with the users before adding more functionalities. The app's core features include a dynamic feed supporting text, images, and videos, along with likes and comments. There's an explore section for discovering trending creators and super groups for community interactions. The profile screen is essential as it's where users decide to subscribe to creators. Design plays a crucial role in how users perceive and interact with your app. It is not just about looking good. A well thought out design can significantly impact user experience retention and even how much trust users place in your app. Colors for example are more than just aesthetics. They evoke emotions and set the tone for your brand. That is why choosing the right color palette is so important. For my app, I initially picked colors I personally liked and then I explored AI tools for logo inspiration. These tools were helpful in brainstorming ideas, but I wanted the final design to be unique and aligned with the app's vision, so I designed the logo myself using Photoshop, iterating on different ideas until I landed on something that felt just right, at least for the moment. When it came to app's overall design, I started by wireframing screens on paper. This step helped me visualize the user flow and ensure that each element served a purpose. So by this time, I was all set with wireframes and feature definition. It was finally time to jump into building it now. Initially, I was actively looking for a co-founder to handle the front end while I worked on the back end. However, that did not pan out as expected and I needed a new way forward. Around this time, I was talking to a lot of people and someone suggested I explore Flutterflow. To evaluate Flutterflow and its potential, I decided to do a small POC to see if it could build what I had envisioned. The POC was a success and Flutterflow proved to be a powerful and efficient tool for my needs. With that validation, I dropped the idea of finding a co-founder and committed to building the app myself using Flutterflow. One of the biggest lessons I learned during this process is the importance of choosing the right co-founder at the right time. A co-founder can be incredibly valuable for a company and the team, bringing complementary skills and helping drive the vision forward. But it is also important to remember that you can have only limited number of co-founders. So making that decision requires careful thought. In my case, it turned out to be a good thing that I did not rush into bringing a co-founder for the front end. Instead, I found an alternative solution that worked for me. However, I know now very well that I may need a business and marketing co-founder in the near future. If you are in the similar situation, focus on evaluating what's truly needed for your project and whether timing is right to bring someone on board. It is better to wait for the right person than to make a rushed decision. Choosing the right tech stack is critical when building an app, especially when you are working on a tight timeline and budget. For the front end, I opted for Flutterflow, a no-code platform. This was a strategic choice because I did not have much of front end experience and needed a tool that would let me move quickly. I had some experience with Android apps back in 2015, but my expertise has always been in the backend. Flutterflow allowed me to create visually appealing and functional screens without writing extensive front-end code, making it a game changer for initial development phase. It allowed me to build Android and iOS apps at the same time. While Flutterflow offers integration with Firebase and Superbase for data storage, I wanted full flexibility to customize both the storage and business logic to suit my app's need. 
For that reason, I decided to build my own custom backend to ensure that I had complete control over how the app's functionality was implemented. For the backend, I started with Python Flask, which was quick and easy for prototyping APIs. However, as the app grew and required more efficient background execution, I transitioned to Golang. Golang's performance and concurrency model made it the ideal choice for handling high-performance tasks and scaling the app. When planning the infrastructure, I initially chose GCP, Google Cloud Platform, because they offer free credits upon signing up, which I utilized to offset initial cost. However, I knew I would eventually need to pay once the credits were exhausted. After comparing the cost, I found AWS to be more cost effective for hosting the database, so I chose MySQL hosted on AWS RDS. This gave me the best balance of cost and reliability for the database layer. For storage, I continued using GCP, leveraging its seamless integration with other tools I was already using. For deployment, I chose Google Cloud Run, a serverless platform that made it easy to scale without worrying about infrastructure management. I also purchased a template for my static sites and hosted them via GCP buckets and the load balancer, which simplified the setup for serving the website effectively. Authentication is a critical piece for any app and I chose Firebase to handle it. Firebase not only integrated seamlessly with Flutterflow, but also provided robust authentication features out of the box, including social login options like login with Apple, which was essential for App Store approval. Another tool that provided invaluable during this process was ChatGPT. I used it extensively to write simple logic code pieces which saved me significant time allowed me to focus on more complex aspects of development. It acted as my coding assistant helping me streamline the development process and avoid getting stuck on smaller tasks. This stack allowed me to focus on building the app's functionality without being bogged down by the unnecessary complexities ensuring a balance of speed, performance and cost effectiveness. The development journey began with a clear plan to build the backend first and then move on to the front end. My initial focus was on creating the core functionality that would power the app. I started by building the user management section, including essential features like login, registration and authentication. These foundational components were critical for ensuring a seamless user experience from the start. Next, I worked on the core APIs, including those for feed, post, comment and like functionalities. These features were at the heart of the app's purpose, so I paid special attention to ensuring they were scalable and robust. This process required thoughtful planning and execution to make sure the app could handle user interactions efficiently. Once the core functionality was in place, I turned my attention to design and user interface. Using the wireframes I had created earlier, I translated those ideas into a fully functional frontend. My goal was to make the app intuitive and visually engaging, so users could navigate and interact with it effortlessly. What made this phase particularly rewarding was seeing the app come together piece by piece. From backend logic to frontend design, each step built on the last, bringing the project closer to completion. Along the way, I learned to adapt and problem solve which proved invaluable in overcoming challenge and maintaining the momentum. One of the greatest things about using Flutterflow is straightforward deployment process for Android and iOS app. Once the app was ready, I just needed to create developer account on both Google Play Store and Apple App Store. After setting up the necessary configurations such as app details, permissions and assets, I was able to deploy the app directly through Flutterflow's deployment system. This streamlined approach saved me a lot of time and effort allowing me to focus on building features and refining the user experience. While the App Store approval process had its challenges, the actual deployment process itself was surprisingly simple and efficient. One of the biggest hurdles I faced was getting the app approved on App Store. Apple required in-app purchases for the app's monetization model. Even though I explained that I wasn't selling services directly, but simply acting as an aggregator, Despite my explanation, they refused to accommodate this app. I even proposed making the app read-only to avoid wasting time implementing in-app purchases, but they rejected the idea stating they were aware of my business model and would still deny the app. Additionally, they require other features like login with Apple, user blocking functionality and more, which added on top of the development timelines I already had. On top of that, Apple takes 30% commission for purchases made through their platform, making the entire process even more frustrating. I also encountered challenges while working with Flutterflow. While it is a powerful tool for rapid development, it has its limitation that required creative problem solving. Despite these challenges and its speed and efficiency were critical for the project. 
I plan to make a detailed review of my experience using Flutterflow to help others who are considering it for their projects. 60 days might not sound like a lot of time for an MVP, but I managed to build much more functionality that I have talked about in this video. Features like transaction history, subscription management, profile updates, and many more were all part of the journey. However, the time it takes to build your MVP will vary depending on the complexity of your product and its feature set. Now my team has grown to include one engineering intern and an engineering consultant which has been a big help in handling technical tasks and fine tuning the app. Right now my primary focus has shifted to marketing and reaching out to creators. Marketing is a completely new challenge for me and I'm learning as I go. I've been actively reaching out to creators through emails, Instagram and YouTube to build awareness and interest in the app. I'm also looking for a marketing co-founder to bring expertise and strategy to this area. I've set up an Instagram page and I'm planning a major marketing campaign for early January which will include commercials featuring popular creators to boost visibility of the app. Looking ahead, building a strong marketing and sales team is high on my priority list. With the right team in place, I'm confident about scaling the app and taking it to the next level. There's still a lot of work to do on the app, but I think this is a good start. And if there is anything specific you'd like me to dive deeper into, whether it is tool like Flutterflow, the development process or marketing strategies, let me know in comments. I'll do my best to answer. And if it needs more detailed explanation, I'll create a video on it. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.